Hey, aloha my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. When we last talked before Bay Area Maker Faire, we were in the process of creating silicone socks that can be put onto a hot end to hopefully, one, help retain the heat from the, the heating element, and two, help block out extraneous airflow from your print fans from cooling the nozzle in the hot end and bringing down your temperature suddenly when those fans kick in. So you ready to finish this up? Let's do it. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna first take you through the process of removing the sock from the mold. I'm gonna show you how it fits in onto the the heat block on the uh, the printer itself, and um, then we're going to come back here and uh, we'll talk about the results. Um, show you show you what was happening uh, with the testing and see if this was a win or a fail. Um, I got some surprising results, and I will come back and explain that at the end. So let's jump over there and do that. Okay, so we've let this sit and harden up overnight and it is uh, pretty firm now so it's uh, time to crack this open and see if we can get it out and see what it looks like so I'm gonna pop the top and that came off pretty clean pretty easy and it left us this block inside so we're going to now try to see if we can find a way to get this out without destroying it I'm gonna just try to ply with it a little bit and see what we can get to come out. Uh, it does not look like it's sticking a lot, so I can see if I can get the razor knife down inside there. I'm just gonna see if I can use that to help kind of pull it out a little bit. See if we can just, although that's not really sticking, I'm hoping I can get some leverage on it to try to get it up without ripping it. So let's resort to Grandpa's favorite trick here. I'm going to grab a butter knife. There we go. We'll use that to pry it out. And so now we have a block here, which is pretty much fit to the shape of the nozzle. Um, so that's going to take some cleanup with the razor knife. And uh, we've got to get the, the inside piece out. Um, so let me see, we can trim through some of this fat quick. Let's see if we can expose that and get it out. There's the inside piece, or the first part of it. Let's see if I can take and try to gently slice this open here. Just try to create a crease. I don't know how exactly this fits on just yet, so I'm trying not to cut away too much. 
uh, because it does need to fit around and over the the heating block so I'm just going to do this gently a little bit at a time until we have that exposed. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna kinda try to create a bit of a box here. I'm not sure if you can, can see what I'm doing, but Trying to cut away the top so that we can get to that inner piece. And you definitely want to make sure that your knife is sharp. There we go. That is a decent sized piece coming out. So we're going to continue to trim that up and away. I get a little bit of webbing. I want to take the knife and trim it. Okay, so there we go. I've exposed the inner core. So theoretically now it should be pliable enough that I can just pop that out. And we now have a sock. Um, it's not pretty, but that should work. Let me see if I can do just a little bit more cleanup on this. overzealous edges off where it pushed out the molding edges uh, I don't know if there's a better term for that and there we have it so it is nice and cleaned up now there's the hole that the nozzle will pop through on the bottom and it should just flex and pop over the hot end and hopefully grab onto it um, I'll trim a little bit more away if I need to uh, that's where the thermistor cartridge would go in there or I'm sorry the the heating cartridge um, so I will um, try to fit this onto the printer and We'll, uh, we'll get back with you and see if it does its job. Fitted on the hot end. And it's not perfect. It's got a little bit of bulge here on this side where the uh, heating cartridge sticks out and the thermistor screw is, of course, here. Um, but it clears the nozzle and it looks like it does a pretty good job of wrapping it. Okay, so as you can see from that last little clip, it fits onto the HE280 acceptable. It's not a perfect fit. It could use some room for improvement where the wiring comes out for the heater cartridge. Um, if you're trying this with the other models that are on Thingiverse, for example, for the E3D V6 or others that you might find available, your mileage may vary. Um, all in all, I'm not complaining. This was a free model available to us to try this with. So in general, I call it that part a success, at least on the fit. Uh, definitely don't have to worry about it sagging or dripping down into the prints. Now, after I did part one, I noted in the comments from a few people, some other people were suggesting some other methods that I wasn't aware of about 
possibly mixing the silicone with cornstarch or using two different uh, or I'm sorry using other types of silicone uh, again I'd mentioned the two part early on for my testing here the the copper RTV seemed to work great now we'll throw out a reminder caution that if you're buying RTV from your auto parts store make sure that you get the high temp copper stuff the black or the red RTVs that they have available and I think there's a blue at some of the stores are not rated for the temperatures that you're going to want to be running your hot end up to um, a lot of those were only rated to 200 C or at a max of 250 C and I felt more comfortable with the RTV that was rated up over 300 C so I knew there weren't going to be any any chemical off gassings or any meltdowns um, causing a mess so on to the results. Now, what I did was I ran through a series of auto PID testing with this. Sorry, every time I say series, Siri on my phone triggers. What I did was ran through a series of auto PID testing, starting at about 220, going up in five, degrees Celsius increments up to about 280. Um, and here's where things got a little bit interesting. I parked the hot end directly over the bed so that the nozzle was paper height over the bed, basically Z0. Um, and then I cranked the fans up to 75%. Now in that range of 225 to 280 with the fans at 75%, it passed auto PID every time. Um, it seemed to heat faster, it seemed to hold faster at those lower temperatures. Now here's where it got interesting. As soon as I cranked the fan up to 100%, anything over about 225, it started failing the auto PID temps. However, it wasn't failing because it could not reach the temperature that we were trying to hit. It was failing because it was going over it was overshooting that temperature and it wasn't dropping back down to where it needed to be example on that is when I tried to auto PID at 240 it would swing up to 243 sit there and then it would time out and fail the the test because it couldn't drop the temperature back down to 240 so I need to reach out to CME CNC and run this by them, find out if this might be something that's firmware related, that it's not able to drop back down, or who knows, maybe the silicone is actually retaining too much heat, which could or could not be a bad thing. All in all, this isn't a killer. Um, I never run the fans above 75%, the part blowing fans above 75%, so I would never set them to 100. Maybe with the rare exception of doing a longer bridge, I might run it up uh, briefly and then drop it back down to about 75. But in general, I, I, I don't see that as being a problem. Uh, but I am curious if anybody is trying this at home to see if they can duplicate the same results and to see if this impacts other hot ends on other printers or with other firmwares as well. So anyway, I hope you like this little experiment. Um, I'm going to call it a success. I think I'm going to uh, play with it and try to make a couple more of these socks so I have a few of them ready. Um, I'm going to look back and some of the comments on the first ones people were suggesting leaving it in the mold to cure much longer than I did. I allowed it to cure for about 24 hours before I pulled it out of the mold and that seemed adequate but some people were suggesting leaving it for at least three or four days. So um, We'll go back and I'll try that. I may or may not post an update later and I will maybe tweet something out if I find out more about why that was overshooting. So, all right, with that, I hope you enjoyed this series on the hot end socks. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Uh, if you like what we're doing, please be sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button and we will see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.